Salutations everybody, it is Maddie here today, continuing my PAX East 2020 coverage. You all voted and decided that the next game I'm talking about is going to be Destroy All Humans Remake, which is exactly what it needs to be. Now, for those of you who aren't aware, I've been working on a Pandemic Studios documentary for the last number of months, so I've been tinkering with the original Destroy All Humans as of recently, and it was great timing to get my hands on the Destroy All Humans Remake because I had the original fresh in my head and could see some of the things they changed. Now this impressions video won't be as long as say my Fallout 76 or Wasteland 3 one because I only got to play say 20 minutes of the game so I didn't get a chance to fully fortify some of my thoughts and dig real deep into the game but I do have some information I want to relay to you guys and just pretty much splurge to you on how great this game is. So it's been rebuilt on Unreal Engine 4. The story is still the same which I appreciated their perspective on because they told me quote you don't touch a classic end quote but where they did did touch it up was in the gameplay. Now there have been some slight changes to bring a modern touch to destroy all humans. So some of you may not know this, but you're able to zap people's brains for DNA and the DNA in this game is essentially the currency that's going to give you upgrades and new abilities throughout the title. However, in the original, when you started taking people's DNA, you were sort of left immobile. You couldn't shoot, you couldn't do anything. So you had to just stand there and let it happen. Meanwhile, in this game, you're allowed to continue to move and shoot. Now it's not just when you're looting DNA, so to speak, it's spread out throughout the entire game. You could also use telekinesis while shooting other enemies. So you could lift them up, take a couple of shots on someone below you, or you can do what I did and have some really fun interactive combos, such as lifting up a hay barrel, using your weapon to set it ablaze, and then flinging it at some humans for extra damage. Now, that does bring me to one of my more minor complaints about Destroy All Humans Remake, which is that aiming with telekinesis felt a bit strange. A lot of the times I wanted to lift up very large objects and just sling them at people, but it never seemed to lock on. Meanwhile, everything else in the game does have some sense of a lock on feature. So this part didn't feel as finely tuned. I imagine it will be sharpened up by launch, but it's something to be aware of that telekinesis felt really good to lift someone, but when it came to targeting them and making two forces clash, didn't really work out all that often and I continued to try that out. Some of the extra maneuverability that they've also offered is dashing, so now you can quickly go left, right, forward or backwards to avoid damage or to get where you need to go a little bit quicker. Also, this game allows you to float a little bit longer in the air with your jetpack compared to the original, something that's also a really strong difference. It feels natural, feels very fitting, and I imagine if Pandemic was still around today and they were making this remake, they would have added these types of things in, which is why I love how they're staying true to the original in a number of ways, but they're also making the right changes in the right spots. I was able to hop in the UFO for a little bit just like in the original's introduction and take on the US Army. The laser ray I noticed had a really cool technological change which is when I actually shot a target and missed I'd leave behind completely burnt ground and I thought that was a really neat detail even when I went off did some other missions and came back that ground was still burnt and I think that memory retention for the game is one of those things that may go over people's heads but I really appreciated this difference it shows that they're using the tech in the right areas the controls for the UFO were a lot more like destroy all humans too where you could sink and rise up but also it felt a little floaty but I think that was for the betterment of the game because I recall when I was playing some of the original Destroy All Humans on PS2, it felt very tight inside the UFO. The sensitivity didn't feel right. While this does feel very loose, I think it's a lot more of an improvement over the original, but in the terms of a modern standpoint, it's gonna feel a little weird for you guys. One minor difference that I picked up on that I think is just because I recently played it, but still I think it's worth mentioning is that I believe the health of the tanks that you're fighting in the military were reduced because I definitely recall when playing Destroy All Humans on the PS2, they took a lot longer for the laser ray to take out, but in this version, the remake, it instantly evaporated them, which I think was a good change because it kind of kept the flow going, didn't overstay its welcome, it made you feel powerful in the UFO, which I think is the ultimate goal. Now this goes without saying, as you can already tell just by watching the gameplay in the background, it looks beautiful. Between the models and the textures and the color especially, it's a great looking game and they're really doing justice to the original. They're retaining that same feel and art style while modernizing it. 
There's the addition of something like Bloom, which I don't think is too overbearing. Sometimes Bloom can be really ridiculous in games like, we'll say, Horizon Zero Dawn or Fallout 76, where they have glitchy Bloom. It can be really weird, but I think this game does it right, at least in the current setting that I saw it in. Surely you don't mean those foul-smelling gas bags beyond the fence. Yes, I'm afraid I do. But they're covered in nipples. I was also really surprised that the HUD has vastly improved compared to the original. That's no disrespect to what I played on PS2. It's more so that when it came to certain missions where you had to seek out specific enemies, it could be a bit troublesome. And also, I feel the elements on screen didn't have a theme. and They didn't stick out as much as they needed to because it was very valuable data for the player. Meanwhile, in the remake, you can easily see on the bottom right corner is your charge limit and what is currently equipped. On the bottom left, I think that the minimap is a a lot more informative for the player of what's going on. There's challenges that can pop up above said minimap. It's not crowded. It informs the player, it keeps them engaged. And like I've been saying throughout this whole video, they've done a really good job of maintaining respect for the originals while taking their own liberations. This is just yet another example of that. One other cool addition they're doing is bringing back a cut mission from the game. I know a lot of us here love resurrecting cut content, whether you're a KOTOR fan or a Fallout fan. We've all messed around with mods and brought back that cut content. They're doing that with this remake, so you do get brand new content because they discovered some files that were leftover voice lines and some of the framework for the mission and said, hey, we're going to put this back in the game because it bridges two missions together. And I think that type of stuff is really cool because one thing I did learn when talking to members of Pandemic Studio is that these games were made in a very short period of time. So I imagine, once again, this is content that would have been in the original game, but they were not given time to, so it just makes sense that it's going to be in the full release. Sadly, I did not get a look at the upgrade system. Despite building up a lot of DNA, I was able to take on a challenge area where I was just taken on farmers left, right, and center. It brings up one other minor complaint I have in the game, which it felt very PS2 in the wrong way here. It's that... Enemies would spawn right in front of me during this challenge. I had to take out, I think it was 30 enemies, but I had to do them in some creative ways, like toss them in a lake, kill them with PK, all that stuff. But when they kept spawning in front of me once the challenge was complete, it was a little disengaging. It felt very weird. And so I was excited to see what I could upgrade with my DNA after the fact, but sadly, I was not able to during this demo. So the gameplay essentially that you've been watching is not brand new. They've been debuting this since E3. I remember at E3 that they were talking about releasing this in early 2020. It does feel in the terms of sharpness, ready to release in a manner of speaking. I personally think that we're going to hear about a release date sooner rather than later. And when we do hear that release date, it's going to be a short window between the announcement of said date for Destroy All Humans remake and the release of that game. But leading up to that, THQ does need to get to work in a number of ways that I've mentioned throughout this video. One of them more notably is the audio. The audio in this game, you can tell there's a difference between the 2005 recorded lines that have been scrubbed up a little bit versus the re-recorded lines here in 2020. Audio quality has come a long, long way in the last 15 years between the release of the original and now the work on the remake. And it is really clear as day. So hopefully they can fix that up a little bit. It really reminds me of, for those of you who have been paying attention to the channel for a while, when I got my hands on with Skyrim Special Edition on the Nintendo Switch, I noted during that preview that Skyrim on the Switch had compressed audio and it sounded really, really strange. And while it doesn't sound strange, there is this noticeable difference that's going to keep nagging at you once you pick up on it. So I hope that they continue to work on the audio quality and really fix that aspect. But personally, I think the industry really needs a game like this. We have not seen just a pure, fun, open world game in this style in a really, really long time. And I love the idea of just hopping into the Destroy All Humans world and going crazy with all the tools and gadgets that they give you. I think it's going to be really good and it's going to vibe with people old and new. So if you haven't really experienced a lot of Destroy All Humans, which don't get me wrong, by the way, while I am doing a documentary on Pandemic, I've actually been experiencing Destroy All Humans for the first time ever as of recently. So it was really cool to get that unique perspective in there. But this isn't a remake where you have to be a fan of the original to understand what's special about said remake. Like, I 
love the Resident Evil 2 remake, but I didn't fall head over heels in love with it because I didn't really have that hands-on time with a classic like the original Resident Evil 2. So if you're new, feel free to hop into the Destroy All Humans remake. You will be just fine. And I leave it in your capable hands. What do you think of the Destroy All Humans remake? Let me know in the comments down below. Other than that, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. Those links are in the description down below. Big thank you to all the patrons who continue to support this content variety. The channel's been doing really well as of late. And I thank you guys for continuing to let me experiment. I'll talk with all of you soon. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.